Hi, I'm Rick Peckham. I'm a professor in the guitar department at Berklee College of Music. I'm here today to talk to you about a few ways to improve your performance on prepared reading examples. A few things I want to emphasize in a couple of different ways. Number one, uh, when you're given some music to read, it's our job to uh, make music out of it. It's uh, not reading music, it's finding music that's on a written page. So if it sounds like you're reading music, you still have some more work ahead of you. You should be just playing music and using uh, the written page as a way to get there. A second thing, when you're doing a prepared reading example, don't stop. So many guitarists, when they're playing, make mistakes when they're doing a written example. But only a small percentage of them keep going, even after they've made a mistake. So let's work to be in that small percentage. Just keep going, even if you make a mistake. The lowest and highest notes will really help you to put your hands on the fretboard where you can play it properly. I always say that Whatever you're reading on the guitar should sound like it was written for the guitar. And ideally, it should sound as if it were written by you on the guitar. So make it so that it sounds natural. Use every trick that you can to make it so that you're, you're making music out of what's on the page. One of the stages is to just go after one note with just the rhythm. Let's do that with the first example. One of the major things to do as far as getting the sound of the piece is to get the rhythm right. And one of the best ways to get the rhythm right is to use a metronome that makes a different sound on beat one. Here's a metronome set on 110. Now I'm going to unmute the first beat. So Whenever I'm reading, I'm listening for beat one. There's sort of like a, a reset that happens on every beat one. I'm just going to take the note C and play that all the way through using this metronome sound. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Next, I would look to see uh, what, what the skips and steps are with this. There's much of this in looking at the fretboard here. I see the lowest note on this example really is a G. It happens a couple times. And the highest note. The highest note looks to me like an E up there. So, when it, well, and it just starts out with that note as well, doesn't it? So I should mark that as well. Okay. Now I look for skips and steps. Through here, the example is moving all in steps. But right there, there's a skip that happens. There's some more skips that happen here. A skip of a third and a skip of a third here as well. Uh, this is all scalar. This is a skip of a third. There's a skip of a third there. And um, then this sort of jump here that happens at the end. And another skip that happens. So, a lot of times we'd love to have it so that it's a scalar all the way through. But a lot of times music has skips in it. Like in that first bar, we go from D to A. And at the end of the second bar, um, in the beginning of the second line, and then another skip that I don't have marked. I should have that marked as well. And then the third. Okay. 
okay, now I'm ready to play this piece. One, two, three, four. to talk about the chords for a second. That's the C major 7 that's at the beginning. F major 7, that works there. And then the C7. F major 7. And I use sort of an old, old uh, cowboy chord C there for that C over E. Jumping up to the D minor 7 at that, in the second bar of that second line. And then for A minor 7, G7, seven, C major 7. So here we go. Here come the chords. One, two, three, four. I put that into a sampler. Now I'm going to play the melody along with the sampler. To turn off the metronome. Here goes. One, two, three, four. I played that right there. I I missed one of the notes right here, but I didn't I didn't stop. I missed that note right there, I think. And uh, let me just do it again. Again, I'm using my chords as backing for going after this melody. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Another thing I might want to emphasize is uh, going after the higher pitch. Higher pitch, louder note, is something I say to my students all the time. Higher pitch, louder note. Like when I'm talking to you right now, I'm using varying levels of volume. When I'm trying to make a point, I sort of lean in and I'm talking a bit louder. That's the way it should be when you're reading a melody too. Higher pitch, louder note. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. So, to reiterate my points again, uh, whenever you're reading music, make music out of it. Don't sound like you're reading. If you make a mistake, don't stop. Everybody makes mistakes, but not everybody stops. You don't have to stop. Keep going, even if you make a mistake. Uh, evaluate the following when you're working on a fingering or a, a strategy to playing the song. Look at the key. Find the high notes and the low notes and see where it fits under your fingers. Find the high note and the low note 
in the, the musical excerpt and make it so that you know where you're going to put your hands to get to those notes in the most musical way possible. I hope this little session has helped you with preparing reading examples. See you around campus. <laughs>